All right, guys, Darren from FBA Elite, and welcome back to another video. So in this week's video, we're going to be looking at various techniques that I use to find products to sell on Amazon, and hopefully it will help you guys find products to sell on Amazon in 2022. So I've got five or six different methods to go through. I'm gonna show you each method, what steps I go through, and then I'm gonna analyze an example product in each niche so you can understand how I analyze niches as well. Um, at the very end of the video, I'm gonna show you my favorite technique, so make sure you stick around to the very end for that. So up first, this is a very simple one, and this is category-based auto-suggest. So when you're coming to Amazon and you're using the search bar, this search bar is dynamic in the sense that it will produce the most searched for products based on the letters you are entering. So for example, at the moment we're searching all departments, so we're searching the entirety of Amazon. If we pop in a random letter, that will tell us what people are searching for most at the moment. Um, and as we're coming towards the end of November at the moment in 2021, you can see Christmas decorations are top of the list. Whereas if I'd have done this search maybe a month or two ago, I wouldn't imagine this would have been top of the list. Now, what people often aren't aware of is this also works at the category level. So for example, if I put CH in here, you'll see the first two are Christmas decorations, Christmas tree, and then champagne. But if I go through into one of the subcategories, so for example, you don't necessarily wanna sell in all departments on Amazon because you all have certain products that just don't really fit with the FBA model. So when you're searching for these types of products, you'll choose some categories that are more likely to have products that would fit your criteria. So if we choose home and kitchen as an example, and then do the same thing, we'll type in CH. Okay, Christmas tree is still the first one. I guess there's lots of Christmas tree in home and kitchen. But the next one is then chopping board, which is you guys have known from many of my previous videos as an example that I use a lot. So that's where category-based auto-suggest is really useful. You can do it in any category. And it just gives you some new things to try because sometimes finding products on Amazon can be a bit boring. You're not sure what to search for. So sometimes just picking onto one of these subcategories, just popping in some random letters like DO and then looking through the list to see if there's anything of interest. So probably none of those, maybe some fitted sheets or um, an indoor mat, or this is a good thing of this, whatever you pop in, you can just come up with some ideas. So when you're completely bored with product research, category-based also suggest with just popping in some random letters. So we've got some measuring cups here, let's take a look. And this will give you some ideas. You'll go down the rabbit hole of Amazon and it will help keep your product research that little bit more interesting because I know firsthand having done this for three or four years now, it can get a bit monotonous doing this again and again. So let's say for example, you found a great product that you want to analyze or you think might be a great product. We haven't analyzed it yet. Let's launch X-Ray from Helium 10. So whichever sales estimated tool you use, you're welcome to use. I use X-Rays, it's always served me well. So let me run through these results from left to right so you can see how I analyze a particular niche. The first thing I do is look at the products themselves to make sure that all of the products are comparable because sometimes with a particular keyword, you might get products in the search results that aren't actually directly related to that product and that will skew your analysis of the niche if you're only looking at the cold hard stats, not ensuring that all of the products are comparable. So that's the first thing I do. The next thing I do is look for brand domination to make sure Amazon or another big brand isn't completely dominating the niche. So I don't really see any big brands in here, maybe Joseph Joseph, but one or two listings doesn't bother me at all. If I saw say five or 10 listings from one particular brand, that might be something to keep in mind. I'm not saying it's a definite red flag, but it's certainly something to be aware of as it may be more difficult to overtake a brand that is dominating the niche. We then have price point. Now, this goes back to my earlier thought about products that you're selling in 2022 are slightly different to maybe what you've been looking at in the past. So at the moment, shipping fees have been higher for the past six months, probably longer than that. So selling cheap products on Amazon is very, very difficult with the FBA model. So price points like this, for me, are far too low. I'm not really considering any products now below around 20 pound. Now, if you can find a very small and light product that isn't gonna cost you a fortune to import, then yes, potentially you can look at some of these lower price points, maybe around 15 pound or a pound or two lower than that. But certainly if you are sea shipping a product because it's a medium sized product, you wanna be looking upwards of 20 pound. Otherwise it will be very, very difficult to make a decent return on that product. The sales, this will come down to your individual product research criteria. So what is a good product for me might not be a good product for you and vice versa. So what you're looking for, the simplest thing in my mind is at least five other sellers on this front page 
achieving sales at or around what you would be targeting. So if I was coming to this niche, looking to sell maybe 400 units per month, this is a very good match because you've got one there at 460, one at 440. Even these guys here are there or thereabouts, and another couple here as well. So this would be quite a nice match if I was looking to come to this niche to sell around 400 products per month. But like I said, the price point is too low, I wouldn't even consider it. The next thing I look at is the sales graph. This is to check seasonality. So for example, if I'd looked at the Christmas suggestions that just popped up, there'd be some huge seasonality issues. But in this niche, maybe we won't see so much. So what I do with this, I look for the products with the most reviews, because generally speaking, the products with the most reviews have been selling for longest on Amazon. So in theory, should have the longest sales history so that we can check the seasonality. So if we just go through these first couple of organic listings, so I tend to ignore the sponsored listings. Let's look at the organic listings. We click on this little chart. This will pop up the graph over the period of selected, which is 30 days. Put this over at least one year, or you can go to all time. And then you can look through here to see if there are any seasonality issues. And you can do this for a number of different products. So let's just go to the next one here. They've got nearly 2000 reviews. So they're gonna be selling for a while as well. we we'll put this over one year. And again, you can look through this to see if there's any peaks or if there's any drop-offs that would indicate that there is a seasonality issue with these particular types of products. So this is why it's really powerful to use this tool because I would also recommend avoiding seasonal products, especially if it's one of your first products. If you've got an established business and you might be considering seasonal products, that's absolutely fine. But I certainly wouldn't look at them as a new product because the last thing you wanna do is put all the effort in to get your product up and running for maybe only three to six months before the season changes. So always keep that in mind. Uh, revenue, this depends whether you're searching by revenue or by sales. I generally do it by sales, but if you're doing it by revenue, that's fine as well. Look at how much these products are making and how much you wanna make and look for at least five other sellers doing a similar sort of revenue figures to what you would be aiming for. BSR, I completely ignore. FBA fees you can look into to make sure it's not gonna cost you a fortune to ship. These indicate these are gonna be quite cheap to fulfill on Amazon, so that is a very good sign. Um, and then finally, we have the review. So you've got the actual rating itself and the review count. So ratings, I like to see 4.7 or below. If I see lots of people at 4.8 or above, then that'll mean they'll have five stars shown up in the actual product search results. So I like to aim for 4.5 or below niches as it's a lot easier to maintain a 4.5 star review rating than it is to maintain a five star. And if everyone else in the niche has got five stars, it's gonna be very difficult to compete. So this would be absolutely fine as there's only one seller here really with a five star rating. Review count, now a lot of people will tell you the review count if you see this to run away from this niche. There's lots of people in four figures and three figures. But the key thing is, is whether you can stand out in this niche. If your product is similar to other people in the niche, then you're gonna get compared based on the review count. If you've got a unique product offering something that the other products don't have, it doesn't matter if that product's got two or 3,000 reviews and you've only got 10. If your product's got a feature that customer prefers, they're gonna buy your product. So always keep that in mind. The more similar your product is to the other products in the search results, the more the reviews matter, the more unique your product is, the more unique functions or features or looks that it's got, then the less the reviews matter. So always keep that in mind when you're developing your product. Um, and you can also check out what category it falls into in terms of fulfillment. But again, that would come back to your FBA fees. And I prefer to do this research myself and do my own calculations on that. So that is very loosely how I analyze a niche and that should give you guys an idea of how to do it yourself. So that was the first method, which is category-based auto-suggest. Uh, and like I say, from most perspective, this isn't actually a bad niche. The one thing I dislike though is the low price point. So I'll just exclude this and move on to the next. So the next one is a very simple method as well. So let's just take a look at the chopping board niche. And this one, all you need to do is pick one of the products you like. So find the one at the top. One of the best sellers is normally a good one to go with. We'll click on this and then we're gonna see what the frequently bought together items are and also what the related items are as well. As sometimes you'll see an idea and you think, ah, oh, that's a great idea. So it might even be the case that you use a category-based auto-suggest to find the niche, then you click onto a product and then you're not finding the product this way instead. And that's why you really are going down a rabbit hole every time you start product research as you never know what you're gonna find. So you can see here, frequently bought with this chopping board is a pan set, which I probably wouldn't get involved in because they're too big, heavy, and expensive. 
but you have got a utensil set there. So maybe a kitchen utensil set is something that's worth investigating. And if you scroll down a bit further, sometimes in the related items, you'll see stuff that isn't all with the same product. So these are all chopping boards, but sometimes you'll see some ideas for different types of products that you may want to consider. Um, I don't know how coat hangers are directly related to chopping boards, but certainly it's always worth checking out, especially if you're running out of ideas and getting a bit bored with your product research. But I'm actually intrigued to see how these kitchen utensil sets are doing. So let's actually jump back to the core search results and we're popping a kitchen utensils. Uh, the number one is kitchen utensils. Ooh, we'll try number two, kitchen utensil set. We'll very quickly run X-ray from Helium 10 so you guys can see what the stats are. And then we can have a quick run through this from left to right. So left to right, they are all utensil sets so we know they're good. There is no brand domination issue. Price point is better and um, there's some selling in the 20 pound region which is really really good so if you can come up with a unique offering you see here these guys are at 55 pounds so that's quite a high then that's quite a high limit or high cap on this niche normally they're very much grouped together so this does show you could potentially be see selling in the higher 20s maybe even in the lower 30s if you come up with a really good offering sales they are a bit lumpy so you've got some very high sales here maybe a lower one here and then a few in between. So if I was looking at this niche, this would be ideal if you're maybe looking to sell initially, maybe two to 300 units per month as you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, fairly close to that 200 units per month. But also if you do get well ranked, then you've got scope to go really, really high. So it's an interesting niche to look at. Next up, we have the sales history. So if we just pick one of these, click with the high review counts, this one's got over 8,000, click on the graph and then look at at least the one year view. You can go to all time if you like, but these guys look like they're selling fairly consistently well all year round. Yes, there are quite a few peaks, but if you look at this as kind of a base figure, I think that is a fairly reasonable thing to assume. This niche doesn't have too many seasonality issues and do that for a few products and see what you get. Next up, we have revenue. So if you're doing it by revenue instead of sales, look for a number of products that have revenue around what you would be aiming for. At least five is my preference. FBA fees, these vary quite a bit, and this is something to keep in mind depending on how you package the product. You might be able to get those dimensions down, and that is the main thing that drives up those FBA fees. So sometimes some clever packaging can actually help reduce your fees and make you more competitive in these markets. But you can see they vary quite a lot from five to six pound all the way up to 12 to 13 pound, which is probably why these guys are so much more expensive as they're selling a much more premium, heavier product, I would imagine. So keep that in mind, always keep an eye on your FBA fees. Review ratings, no one is doing that well in this niche, 4.5 stars is what everyone is gonna be showing with a couple showing four stars as well. So if you can get 4.5 or five stars in this niche, you'd be absolutely fine. Review count, yes, there are some established players, but there's also people with double figures on this first page. So generally speaking, a very interesting niche, just to have a quick look at these bigger images. You can see lots of people are trying to make out though you have got the most valuable product by bundling as much as they possibly can. But sometimes that does have the effect that you've put so much into the image, things get a little bit lost because it just ends up being very, very noisy. So sometimes it's not always about having the most things, but it's having the ones that are the most noticeable, the things that really add value. And that's what I'd be looking to do if I was coming to this niche. How could I enter this niche and introduce some kind of element that if it was with these other eight results here, would just jump out at you and then that would catch your eye and that'd give you an opportunity to succeed in that niche. Okay, so on to the third method, as I know this video is going on a bit. Look at your order history. This is a gold mine or can be a gold mine if you order a lot on Amazon, which I imagine many of you do. The product ideas you've actually got in your house probably and you can go and take a look at now to see if you actually like that product and how you could improve that product so this are some of my recent products i've ordered you can see we're getting ready for christmas with indoor lights and actually an outdoor socket box which probably is a very nice product to sell with fba although i imagine there is some seasonality issues but it's certainly something that's kind of cheap uh, there's not many moving parts it's a very very straightforward simple product Extension needs, I would probably stay away from as a electronics, um, come down a bit further, uh, teeth and gel, I don't think that's not for me. Um, we have more Christmas lights, fire stick, uh, phone cases, bubble wrap potentially. 
but go through your order history and you'll get some ideas for products that you think, oh, that's interesting, and you've got them in your house straight away. So that is always a great place to start. If you've run out of ideas, go to your Amazon order history. And if you look on this select box here, you can go back many, many years. And I've actually been buying on Amazon since 2003. So I have an awful lot of products I can go and check out firsthand. All right, so these next couple of techniques before I get to my favorite technique at the end, which is a free technique. Um, but before I do, I just wanna show you a couple of methods you can use if you have got a Helium 10 subscription. Now you can actually do this for free as their free plan allows you to do this a few times. So if you wanna try it yourself, feel free to do that. So the first method is using black box and doing the product search, which is what you'll see a lot of these tools offer, which is a straightforward product search based on the product criteria that you enter. So you can choose what categories you wanna search for, how much revenue that product makes per month, the price point review count, and there's lots of advanced filters you can use as well. But I'm not gonna go through that and show you because you guys have probably seen this many times either for Helium 10 or for Jungle Scout or other tools like this. But one unique one I do wanna show you in Helium 10 is actually doing this technique, but doing it by keywords instead of by products because I think this is a really powerful method that you guys can try. So click on the keywords tab at the top here and I'll talk you through how I would do this. So I'm looking for a keyword phrase that has maybe a minimum search volume of 200 per month. Anything less than that, and you're probably not gonna get the kind of sales figures you'd be looking to achieve. Monthly revenue for this product, again, this would come back to what you're trying to achieve with this product. So if I wanted to make maybe say a thousand pound per month, which is, I would aim for around that as a 30% profit margin, you might wanna make around about a 3,000 pound revenue per month to give you a chance of hitting that. Um, I'm just gonna put 2,500 in for now with a max revenue. Well, I can go to bigger products. I'm in that position to do so. So I'm gonna put 10,000. See, see what we find between 2,500 and 10,000. Minimum price of the product, I'm going with 20 pound at the moment as so I don't wanna be touching anything that is cheap. Minimum review count, I'm not worried about. I'd like to do my own analysis of the need to decide whether it's too competitive or not, rather than just going by these cold, hard figures. Word count, I would like there to be at least two keywords in the phrase for any single keyword phrase, the search volume is probably gonna be crazy high and it'd be crazy competitive. So making that a minimum of two keywords should bring back products that are slightly less competitive. We've then got the advanced filters. So go through here and choose some of the classic FBA categories such as automotive, baby products, um, garden and outdoors, home and kitchen. What other ones have we got here? Maybe pet supplies and shall we go with stationary and also sports? So we'll try those for now, but feel free to choose the ones. We've got seven categories selected. I'm not gonna introduce any keyword search at the moment, but if you're focused on a particular type of product, you can certainly have some real good results by using these two features here, which is the keyword search or keywords to exclude. Shipping size tier, this will adjust based on the country or the marketplace you're searching. So at the moment at the top, we're searching amazon.co.uk. So what I'm gonna choose, if you can see that, yes you can, um, I'm gonna choose small oversize, small letter, large letter, small envelope, large envelope, uh, standard envelope as well, standard parcel, but I'm not gonna choose standard oversize or large oversize as that will make the FBA fees quite high. Uh, number of sellers, I'm gonna leave that blank. Variations, we're gonna leave monthly sales, I'm gonna leave blank as we're doing it by revenue. Uh, best seller rank, I'm gonna leave best sales. So you've got so many tools you can use here. I'm gonna use fulfillment and just choose FBA so I can find FBA products that are already doing really well. I'm not worried about all these other features. You can take your time yourself. If I went through each one, this video would be crazy long. The only one I would pay attention to here is competitor revenue. So if we read the help box, it says, the minimum or maximum number of top 10 ranking products of keyword search results that have more than the selected estimated revenue in the last 30 days. So going back to my criteria of having at least five sellers on that front page that are doing similar figures, this is the feature that you can use. So we want there to be at least five sellers having revenue of a minimum of 2,500 pounds and that will do my criteria for this example. And then we click search and see what Helium 10 or black box from Helium 10 returns. And you can go through here and get some ideas that you probably would never have considered such as a fleece for a dog. And um, what else have we got here? Let's come down and see what we've got. Bark collars, although I wouldn't necessarily be the type of product I'd want to sell. Uh, raincoats, so this is obviously picking through from the pet product that I selected. Uh, what else do we have that might be interesting? Cycling gloves could be an interesting product to look at. But you can see here, you've got lots of products to go through and you've got all of the key 
details summarized in these columns. So this is a really powerful tool. And if you're bored of using the standard product search, try the keyword search as it can bring you back some different results. So the next method I like to use is also a tool from Helium 10. And this is taking a keyword research tool and reverse engineering it to use it for product research or product discovery, should I say. And if you've got any keyword research subscriptions, this should work anywhere, but I use it for Helium 10 as that's the platform that I use. So if I pop in a potential product here, so for example, chopping boards and choose get keywords, what we're gonna do is go through the filters and get possible other ideas. So this is a real good way of finding sub niches in a niche that maybe is too competitive. So if you like look for niche and you think, no, I'd like to launch a product in this niche, but the sales volumes are far too high or there's far too much competition, this is a great way of finding a sub niche where the competition may be lower, but there might still be enough demand to justify you entering this niche. So what we do is once the search results have loaded, the first thing I want you to do is take a look at the word frequency. So we searched for chopping board, but you can see here, the second most popular on the word frequency board is wooden. So maybe wooden chopping boards is a more attractive sub niche of the chopping board niche that you might want to get involved with. So you can go through this, you can see there's also plastic here. Obviously Joseph is a brand or bamboo. So already you've got a few kind of additional keywords you could include in your search term and then go through the analysis again. Maybe you want to enter the wooden chopping board niche or the plastic chopping board niche, or maybe launching a bamboo wooden chopping board would be a great idea. So that's the first thing I want you to look at. The next thing I want you to do is to come down here and just play with these filters. So search volume, I'm gonna put this at 200 again to exclude any products with a very, very low search volume. And then I'm gonna click apply. And this has reduced the keywords down to 255. The next thing I wanna do is to sort these by search volume. I wanna see some really high search, search terms and see if I can find an opportunity within these. So sometimes you're gonna find things that aren't directly related. So for example, here you've got a knife set, but it is a product that you might want to kind of look into yourself. And then you'll see some keywords, for example, branding again here. So chopping board, uh, kitchen storage, maybe you wanna look through some kitchen storage as there's a huge search volume for kitchen storage. Um, and you can go through this list. If you wanna keep it really precise to just related to chopping boards, go to advanced filters and enter one of the keywords here. So for example, I've entered chopping and this will ensure that when I click apply, this will reduce this list to keywords that contain chopping. So I'm pretty certain that all of them are gonna be chopping board related. And you'll see here, this fil filtered keywords count has reduced drastically from, I think it was 255 to 80. Now we can go down and see what the main search terms are sorted by search volume. So as expected from the word cloud at the top, you've got the wooden chopping board. Chopping board set is also an interesting one. Instead of launching a single chopping board, you can do a whole set of different chopping boards. Uh, glass chopping boards, something to consider. Personalized chopping board, I would probably avoid that as FBA and personalization don't really go hand in hand as you're buying in bulk. Uh, wooden chopping boards and just go down marble chopping boards just make sure they've still got a good search volume and then if you find something that's interesting to you click through to the niche and do your analysis through x-ray as i showed you on some of the previous examples so that is how you can use some of the tools from helium 10 to do keyword research if you are interested in helium 10 you can use our discount code so we've got fba elite 10 and that will give you 10 percent off every single month you can see here or you can use FBA Elite 50. So if you only need it short term, this is a better discount code to use for a month. So FBA Elite 50 will get you 50% off your first month. The best option though, if you are planning on using this long term, so for example, for at least a year, if you put this onto annual plan and combine it with either of those codes, that will get you three months off in total. So that will bring all the way down from pretty much 1200 to $900. Now I know that sounds like a lot of money, but when you're working with Amazon FBA, this tool is invaluable. And I've been using this every week since 2018 and it's still my go-to tool. So that's why I use it. So if you're still with me, this is my favorite technique. And if you've been a subscriber of this channel for a while, you would have seen me use this in many, many videos. And this is called the store raider method. So what we do is we pop in a particular product. So let's do chopping board as we've been using this throughout the video. And we choose one of the best sellers. So I like to pick a seller that's doing well and I like the look of their products because usually if they've got one good product, they've probably got more than one good product in their store to look at. So I'm gonna choose Oliver's Kitchen and I'm picking these guys because I've seen them before and I really like the way they present their listing with their packaging. So let's go through to the here. And then what we can do is click on to sold by on the right hand side. So click on sold by Oliver's Kitchen. 
and then from here we'll be able to see what products they sell now if you do this on your mobile phone they won't actually show you this product tab so make sure you're doing this on your desktop or your laptop once we click on here we can see all of the products this seller sells and this technique is my favorite it's the one i do the most it's how i find my products and once you've got a list of their products click on helium 10 run the results just like you would if it was a search results and you've got all of the products there for you to compare so you can see how many sales they're doing you can check the seasonality and everything else that i've showed you previously so this is a really powerful tool and one of my favorite things about this technique is you never know what you're going to find because some of these sellers sell products that are completely unrelated so Oliver's Kitchen generally, as you'd expect, are kitchen-based products. And as you go down, you can see most of them do fall into this category. But sometimes you'll find a seller who has some fantastic products that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. And there's no way you would have probably found them yourself without using this technique. So make sure you use the store rater method. It is my favorite method to use. It is a great way of keeping your product research interested and also a great way of finding some really good FBA products. So hopefully you guys have found that helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. Hit that like button. If you want to see more from me and really go deep on Amazon FBA, we do have the FBA Elite course. We've got modules covering all areas of Amazon FBA and even just the product research module is like 19 videos long. So there's lots in there for anyone that's looking to get a head start and get their business up and running for 2022. And if you're not already a member, make sure you sign up at fbaelite.com. It is completely free. We've got forums covering all areas of Amazon FBA. I'm on there every day trying to help people out. So make sure you sign up there. If you found this video useful, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more from me, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the forums.